So beat detection can be quite important when we're working with, uh, say, older tracks, or even, let's say, we're on tour and we're recording over the period of you know, six to seven nights or eight nights on tour, you don't always use a click track. So basically what we can do is we can record, say, using an MR816, which has got multiple inputs, directly to the machine using Cubase, and then later on in the studio or at home, we can actually load our tracks up, we can view different sections of the tracks, and we can use a beat detector to actually go through and analyze our tracks and find the important beats in there. So it's using the WAV file basically to search, and so it's, it's quite an advanced algorithm, but it's, it's searching through, finding hit points, and then it's allocating actual tempo points in there. So what we're gonna do is come up with a tempo map. So that means from night to night, we can actually go and take the first section of our song, in the second section and the third section, we can create a tempo map for each one of those sections and then in Cubase, we can actually combine them all and start working with them together. So just to give you an example, what I've got here is an old recording and there's no click track used on this recording. And to be, to be fair, there's a lot of people still who won't use uh, click tracks in the studio, which is fine. But let's say they want to make some edits. So this will also enable them to, uh, to go through and create a tempo map specifically for the track. So if we have a look at the track here, I've just imported it directly from a CD. This is also great for remixing and uh, I guess all that sort of thing where you're taking something and you want to actually apply some sort of map so we can work with it in Cubase. Just quickly, one other thing that we can do is either use the tempo of the song or we can use the audio warp feature to actually move the recordings into, uh, into our main tempo. So if we want to set everything at 130, we can instantly change all of that as well. Okay, so I've got a normal track. I just highlight it, and then I'm going to go to Project, Tempo Detection. So this is, this is um, the new algorithm. So I'm just going to analyze it, and you can see that takes a little bit of time to, to go through and find all, the diff all of the different hit points. Um, but as soon as it's done, it'll then bring up these uh, sort of warp tabs at the, at the top of the project window here. So you can see them there. So let's just move this out a little bit. So as we stretch it out, you can actually see the different tempo points. So I mentioned earlier about this tempo track that we have in Cubase. So now if we, if we zoom in on this tempo track, you can see on the left hand side we've got all of the recorded tempo changes. And then as we move through the song, you can see where it's actually varied. And if we actually open that up, um, the WAV file, as soon as we click on that, it's all set. And as we open it up and extend it out, you'll actually start noticing on this window here that the hit points are related to key key musical areas in our track. Um, now, of course, we could go through and say open up Loop Mash 2 and say uh, Loop Mash 2, where are you? Right here. And now we could use Loop Mash and we could drag samples into Loop Mash and Loop Mash will be exactly in time with the track that we've just uh, mapped the tempo for. So we can either use the, the tempo of the pre-recorded track or we can change the pre-recorded track to uh, fit in with a constant tempo. Um, so another excellent feature in Cubase 6.